Hi guys from wherever you are watching me. My name is Prophetess Monica. I'm the senior pastor at the Prophetic City Church. I am a mother of two boys. I am a businesswoman, an entrepreneur, a CEO. I got several businesses. Oh, I got PM Cloud. You have to check it out. It's an online business. I got PM Mavazi whereby we glam women. We import clothes from Turkey. Mm, mm, PM. I am, am I a motivational speaker? I think I'm a motivational speaker. <laughs> I don't know. And then uh, I'm a counselor by profession, pursuing my degree. Mm -hmm. What else am I? I'm all those things. I'm a jovial woman, happy woman, strong woman. By the way, I'm a go-getter. I'm a happy soul. I am a social human being. I love people. I connect easily. sana. <laughs> anyway, guys, welcome to my random talk, my random thought. Today, I just want to talk about these things that have been happening. Since we lost one of our ministers by the name Osinachi, Minister Osinachi from Nigeria, um, I have not been able to talk about that thing so much. It's a bit emotional. And, uh, you know, I posted on social media and I said, you know what? This woman was killed by society and religion. Mm -hmm. She was killed by society and, the re and religion. And I will be showing you how. Today, it's a random talk, a random thought. And I just want to come and talk about violence in marriage. We have seen one of the ministers that we love so much, Minister Osinachi from Nigeria. We saw her dead in marriage. And uh, I think it was an eye-opener to so many people. And I've not been able to talk about it so much. I just posted on social media after a few days and all that. It's, it's emotional just to lose such a gift, talent, grace, a voice, a voice of two, two generations because of violence. Now, I want to talk about several things and um, let me know your thought. Let me know what do you think about violence in marriage. As for me, I think it is not worth it. If, uh, you know, if this marriage is the highway to your death, highway to your grave, I don't think it's, it's worth it. It is not. And I don't believe uh, in violence, in marriage, whichever kind of violence, whether verbal, emotional, uh, you know, mental, or even physical, even that emotional violence, it's not healthy. You'll die young, you'll die, you know, before you achieve your goals and your dreams. All right, so guys, I said that this minister of the gospel, Osinachi, was killed by society and... Um, religion yeah and i'll be showing you how when i say so i want to talk to ministers of the gospel where you minister whether you are a pastor an evangelist a bishop a prophet an apostle a singer you're a gospel singer you i want to talk to the celebrities i want to talk to influencers people that have names out there people that command you know crowds out there i want to talk to us because uh we are good at playing pr mm -hmm. we are good at playing pr i'm talking out of experience we are good at covering we are good at eh, covering and uh, speaking on behalf of someone and just assuming that everything is okay showing the public we are good we are okay yes we are good at that and uh, i don't blame anyone it's only that we influence a lot we carry names we carry graces and we are like what will people say what will they take me for if i say today i'm divorcing and i'm a singer will they continue listening to my songs we like be invited to go bless people. If you're a pastor, a bishop, an evangelist, or wherever you are, you have a church, 
you are like, will people continue coming to my church? Will they believe in my grace? Will they believe in what I carry? Maybe you are there, you are a celebrity, an influencer, you endorse products, you are, you know, you endorse companies, and you are like, if I divorce, will I be given this job? Will I continue? People, will people continue to trust me to endorse their products or their services that they sell? And because of that, we pretend all is well when we are bleeding, when we are crying, when we are crushed, when we are down, when we are desperate, we pretend that all is well. In the house, we are living together, but not sleeping in the same room. We are not talking. But when we go to the public, we are the best friends. We are the best couple. You know, couple goals. <laughs> And this is something that is very common. Very, very common. It is happening. What do I want to say? If you are a great man or woman in the society and you are going through violence in your marriage, imagine it's not worth it. I think peace of mind is more important than what you are giving out there. You are more important than the crowd out there. Very important than the people you influence out there, than the public, than the social media. More, you, you know, you are the most important person in your life. And I've been saying this, you are the most important person in your life. As prophetess Monica, I am the most important person in my life. Not the people I preach to, not my kids, not my husband, not my sisters, not my brothers. I am number one. Then the rest come. Other people are secondary. My children, my husband, my congregation. You know, if I don't have peace, if I am not happy, what will I be passing on to people? A hurt person will hurt others. I am telling you, for free, if you are hurting, you will hurt people. People that are near you, your families, your family, your, your, your friends, if you are preaching like me, you will hurt the church, the congregation. Because what you release to them is what they take. So what do I want to say? If you are hurt, you will release hearts. If you are there watching me, you are a great man or a great woman, and you are in abusive marriage, be wise. Be very wise. God hates divorce. So much. It is even written in the Bible that God hates divorce. But he will not be happy when you die in that marriage either. He will not be happy. He will not celebrate because you persisted and you endured until you were killed. Heavens will not celebrate you. That is not the kind of death that God celebrates. Don't die. Do not die before your time. Mama Namnagani. And I, I want to tell people, marriage works very well. It is a sweet thing. Marriage is awesome. Personally, I love marriage. Mimi, I'm a family woman. I love family. I love marriage. Marriage is an institution that God honors so much because it's a covenant. That is why we go on the altar. We exchange. It's a covenant. We enter into a covenant of two and we become one. So God honors marriages so much, very much, and it is a respected institution. But if it is the highway to your death, if it leads to grave, I think it's not worth it. I repeat, your peace of mind is better than anything else. It's better you are alone and you have peace than being married but you cry every day or you die before your time. So it's better to have peace of mind. So, if you are a celebrity, an influencer, a pastor, a singer, whichever capacity you are, but you influence people, people look up to you. You are a role model. Don't die because people look up to you. When you die, who will they look up to? When you die, who are we going to look up to? Today, Osinachi is no longer living. His ministry was huge. It was global. 
So many worshippers, upcoming ministers, were looking up to her. Were looking up to her singing. Were looking up to her ministry. Today, where is she? She's not helping us in the grave. What do I want to say? We are just left with memories. You are a role model. Yes. But if you die today, how will people benefit from your death? All right. Let me come to society. When I say that this lady was killed by society, I mean it. Simply because you are so harsh. Society, you are so harsh. If, especially in the days we are living. We are living in days of technology, days of social media, Facebook, Instagram. Nowadays, we don't even watch news. We have the news on our phones, on the social media platforms. That is how we are grown. And because of that, you find people are so judgmental. Society is harsh. Society is cruel. Society is bad. And I'm talking out of experience. Some people, society, it is so judgmental, so cruel, so heartless. Hmm? That you can even post a photo. Let me give an example with me. I post a good photo with my boys. And they will be like, this photo is not complete. The family is not complete. Where is the husband? Where is the father of those children? My friend, we also go through, through things that you go through. We are not superhumans. Eh? Kama kuna jina, kama yo. We are not superhum superhuman. We are not extraordinary. We are people like you. The issues you go through your marriage, your relationships, your family, we also go through them. Mm -hmm. We go through them. So you find some of us, we ran away from death or we are running away from death. Some of us, we are running away from, you know, a lot of things. And then you ask such a question. You wonder, this person, didn't, didn't she or he, you know, think before asking this question? Maybe she thinks like, what if Prophetess Monica is going through, you know, through things. Life happens. <laughs> Every day, life happens. You know, when a person, you become reasonable and you're like, okay, maybe she might be going through something. You sometimes ask us questions that are so hurting. And because of those questions and we avoid the questions, we stick into these toxic marriages and abusive marriages because we don't want to reach that level whereby you will be asked something, whereby you will be asked a question. So we find it's better I stay here, be beaten, you know, being mistreated, being abused than, you know, handling the society. And that is why I'm saying sometimes you kill people. Society kills. Because now you, some people are not strong to stand, the, you know, these questions to stand all this chaos on social media and all that and we cannot hide because we are already public figures so some people are not strong to withstand the questions the rudeness bullying so they opt to stay and endure than to be bullied if this person dies we have killed the person because the person was fearing what will the society say how will the society take me? So I want to speak to society to tell you pastors, singers that sing the gospel, public figures that preach the good news. We are not superhuman. We also go through stuffs. If you see someone, they are no longer with their wives. They are no longer with their husbands. They are no longer posting their wives or their husbands. Please don't be judgmental. Don't jump into conclusion. Don't jump into conclusion. Don't say we are not good role models. Hey, she's not a good role model. What can she tell married people? What can she tell? What can she say to the youth? What can she tell women that are married? My friend, I want to tell you. If you feel we are not role models because maybe we are going through separations, divorce, or some problems in the marriage, it's better we stop becoming a role model than dying in making a role model. Mm hmm I want to ask a question. A coach, we know a coach. 
coaches that coach soccer ni soccer ama ni the football match you know it so many of them they are not footballers they don't know even how to play the ball they go to learn how to be a coach they go for trainings they go to school they are coaches that are not footballers and they coach very well and the team does very well what do i want to say will you say that this coach have not uh, you know they don't know how to play football so they cannot lead a team of football i want to tell you you can be a single man or a single woman and you are able to coach marriages you are able to cancel marriages you are able to help people in marriages and marriage is not a certificate to show that you are a man of god or a woman of god mm -hmm. it is not a certificate and it is not a certificate to enter heaven okay it is not a certificate to enter heaven so society please don't show us as if or you know judge us as if we are not born again again it's like we backslidden don't judge us so harshly that we are even afraid to go out there to to say what we got through inside because we want to be good role models good mothers and good fathers i'm not advocating divorce i'm not advocating separation but if this marriage is the highway to your grave it is not worth it it is not worth it don't like put us in a cocoon in a cave you should be perfect in your marriage for you to preach perfect for you to sing perfect for you to lead mm -mm. sometimes it is not working what will you do sometimes you are being molested you are being beaten abused what will you do so society let us be please oh let us be all you can do to us is to pray for us and if you cannot pray for us keep quiet keep quiet and some people dig they can dig they can dig they can even call their clans you know i call them F fbis of social media the in-laws of social media please oh, the things that we go through if we give you our lives you surrender some of us if we give you a day in our lives a day in our marriages you will say i better stay single or if this is the life in this marriage i am ready to be single yes we go through stuffs we go through stuffs life happens and we don't choose that nobody gets married with intentions to live marriage when we enter marriage whether it's a man or a woman our intentions is for the marriage to work you cannot enter marriage and joke with it as a woman of god or a man of god or a gospel minister you cannot just enter marriage you are joking you cannot just enter marriage you know and you are not serious about it when we get married married in marriage even you people that are watching me when you get into marriage you are entering and you are saying for good for us this has to work so it is not your fault that it never worked it is not your fault that it is not working if it is not working it is not working if there is abuse there are other things you can tolerate but if someone is hitting you someone is telling you i will kill you someone is taking a knife and showing you someone is taking something and throwing to you someone is telling you one day one day i'll kill you please it is not worth it society kindly pray for us cover us love us the way we are and if you feel we are not good role models to you you can look for another role model you are not forced it's not by force to follow someone it's not by force to love someone okay and don't throw stones to us eh hey, nowadays we don't see her, his wife nowadays we don't see his his girlf his uh, his fiance nowadays we don't see the husband we don't see the father of the children you never know what we go through you never know and sometimes we might be running away from what took osinachi we might be running away from death 
You never know because you don't know us in person. You never know. All you can do is to pray for us and to love us. And to say, you know what? I love Prophetess Monica. I love her ministry. I love the way she preaches. The rest, I don't care. That is her personal life. Let me follow this grace. I tap into the grace. I listen to the word of God. And I'm good to go. Because we are ordained. If today I choose, for example, not to get married, that do not mean I will never officiate weddings. That do not mean I'll never talk to the married people. As I have said, a coach may not be a footballer, but he coaches well. And the team goes internationally. I can be that coach. I may not be, you know, having the best marriage of my life. But by the grace of God, the calling in me, and also, remember, we went to school, some of us, I'm pursuing counseling psychology, doing my degree now. I had done a lot, and I'm pursuing it. I go to mentorship classes. I learn about marriage. I go to, you know, to all those things to make sure that my congregation is well covered. I'm able, when a woman or a man comes to me with marriage issues, I'm equipped. I got skills. I am professional. I got the, the skills with me. And also, I have the grace and anointing that God gave me. And when God called me to be a pastor, he knew. He knew I'll be dealing with some things. So he equipped me. All right, society? Mm -hmm. Until there, are we good? I want to talk to the church, men and women of God. A lot of cases come to us. Like today, I have been in the office. You find it on Thursday when I see people. I'll have not less than five people who have come to see me because of their marriages. Because the marriage is an enemy to the devil. Devil hates marriage. Devil hates family. Because devil knows when marriage is good and family is good, it is working. The church is working. Society is working. The nation is working. Everywhere is working because a family is the foundation. So he hates family. He don't want to see families working. And that is why he's fighting the marriage. Church, men and women of God, my fellow ministers, if a woman comes and tells you the way he's being heated, every day he's beaten, don't tell her, let's pray, woman. Don't tell her, my sister, let's join our hands and pray. We trust God that this man will change. Marriage never changes anybody. It amplifies whoever you are before you are married. That is who you become times 10 or times 100 when you marry. Because marriage amplifies a person. Marriage brings out the character very well. And it brings out who you are very well. It's like tea leaves. You put tea leaves in hot water, it gives you the color. That is what marriage does. It gives the color, the real color, the real true colors of a person. So don't tell a, a man that a woman is throwing some things in him, uh, to him. He found a wife hiding a knife under the pillow and you tell this man, you know what man, let's pray my brother. God will change your wife. Change your wife. We see men that are burnt by water. Hot water. At night you are sleeping. Pop! And the wife with hot water. We see men that were poured acid. We see men that were, you know, stabbed and they die. We see women that are dead. Dead. They are literally killed. Because they were born again. They were leaders in the church. They were deacons. They were praise and worship leaders. They were the, the lead worship. And you know, the pastor keeps on telling them, things will be well. He will change. He will change. She will change. She will change. So men and women of God, when we receive such cases, these cases are not good. Old. They are not cases just to overlook. You don't want to go and bury your congregation. You go and bury your deacon. You, you don't want to go and bury your choir member. You don't want to go and bury your elder. Simply because you told them it is going to be well. It is going to do. If violence is there, let it be called a spade a spade and a spoon a spoon. If there is violence in that marriage, let us not as men of God make people, you know, stay and stay and they die and they die. I'm not telling you to tell people to divorce. 
But tell people, if you want to die in the marriage, it's okay. It's your choice. If you want to live, you know what to do. Make the right decision. And now you are alive. Make the right decision because when you are dead, you'll not be able to talk. You'll not be able to make the right decision. So church, if a person, you know what is happening with churches? A deacon is here and they divorce and I remove him or her from the leadership. Someone is here, worship leader, because they divorce, I remove them. That is the fear we are selling to people. That if you divorce, I will not need you in the membership or in the leadership. And I have seen even women that come and women that call because they were divorced, they were removed out of the, you know, leadership. They cannot lead again. I've seen women coming to me, even men, telling me, woman of God, you cannot believe. I was the chair lady of my church, but we separated with my husband. We divorced. And now I was told I cannot continue leading. So church, we are killing people slowly. Men and women of God, we are killing people slowly. I have seen churches whereby they don't recognize single moms. If you're a single mother, you are not given any department. You're not given any leadership, no matter how good you are. Why? Because you are divorced. Because you are a single mom. Because you are a single dad. Because you, have, you left your wife. You know, what are we doing, church? What are we doing, pastors? What are we doing? So what we are doing, because this person loves God so much and they want to serve, they stay in the marriage, then they die. That is when you say, oh my God. And she came severally in my office. She told me all these things that were happening. You are not helping. You are not, you will remain guilty forever. So men and women of God, people are suffering in marriages. Violence is happening. Death is the, you know, death can smell in that marriage. You can smell death. You are smelling death in this marriage. Please, don't blackmail people. Don't intimidate people. That if you do this, you will no longer be a leader. If you do this, you no longer be. And let us endorse people. God hate divorce. But he do not hate a divorcee. That divorcee is still a son of God and a daughter of God. I am not here to advocate divorce or separation. I'm here to talk. It's a random talk, a random thought. And I think until now, and I repeat and I say, violence in marriage, it's not worth it. It is not what you ask for. It's not what you signed for. When you signed the certificate of marriage, when you signed... When you put the, that ring on the finger, it is not what you are looking for. You are not looking for slaps. You are not looking for insults. You are not looking for, you know, abuse. You are not looking for that. You are not looking for humiliations. When you said, yes, I do, and you sign the certificate, you are looking for happy, happiness, joy, peace, companionship, family, beautiful marriage. That is what you are looking for. So you are not looking for death. Okay? Finally. Finally. And finally. If you are in this setup of marriage. Whereby death. It is so clear. It is so clear. Please don't die. Don't die. We, we love you. It, it, it's better you stay single and we be seeing you. Than being dead. You are a daughter to someone. You are a mother to someone. Or you will become a mother to someone. You are a cousin. You are an auntie. My brother, you are a son of someone. A brother to someone. A father to someone. Those people need you. They need you alive. I repeat, they need you alive. So, that was my thought. I have spoken to, you know, the men and women of God and ministers and celebrities and influencers. I've spoken to the society. I've spoken to the church. And finally, let me talk to parents. We saw, I don't remember which year, but it's not long time ago, here in Kiambu, Limuru, a woman who had two kids going back to her home because the man is beating her. The man is torturing her. The man is doing all nasty things to her. She went back home, told the mother, Mom, 
I cannot do this. I cannot do this, ma'am. He's beating me every day. I cannot tolerate this. He's cheating on me, beating me, threatening to kill me and my children. And the woman, because she was, you know, a deacon or a leader, you know, the, the front leaders in the church, she was like, I cannot take this one. You will not humiliate me in this village. Hmm? You know I'm a leader in my church. You cannot come here and people start seeing you here. You have to go back to your husband. Even me, your father used to beat me and I never died. Go back. <laughs> go back to your husband. Go and submit. And this woman have two kids. Do you think she has been in that marriage without submitting? Getting two kids. That's not two years marriage. Not even three years marriage. It's several years. That means this woman meant to stay in the marriage. And we saw the mother chasing her away. And she told her, you know what? That is the bus fare. Go back to your husband. Go back and build your home. Go back and build your marriage. The woman never went back because she could not take it. She went in a dam, threw herself and her two children. The mother lost or the mother got a loss of a daughter and a loss of grandchildren. You better stay with your daughter and society speak the way they want to speak or the church even tell you to step down because your daughter came back home than having three graves at a, at a go, than having three graves at once. It's better you receive your daughter alive, breathing, than receiving her in a casket, than receiving her in a, you know, in a, in, in a grave, in mortuary. It's better receive your son walking, breathing, than receiving your son in a casket. It's better. So parents, if your daughter or your son speaks to you and they tell you about the abuse, please oh, let them find refuge. Let them find a shoulder to lean on. You are the only person they can trust. They cannot trust even their friends. They cannot trust the society. They cannot trust even the church. You are the only person they can trust if they came back to you. Let them come back. Listen to them. Call the other party. Listen the story. You know, dialogue. And if you see for sure, for sure, this can lead to death. You better tell your son or your daughter, please my daughter, please my son, just come home God will bless you with another partner receive your daughters especially those daughters eh? let me talk to the parents that have daughters receive your daughter I'm not forgetting men I know men go through issues also men are abused in marriage but mostly are the ladies that go back home receive your daughter when she's still breathing kicking when she can stand again and start all over again. Your name and your position in your church or society or your career or wherever you are in this world does not matter when you lose a baby. When you lose that son, when you lose your daughter is when you understand even that, you know, that position you are given in your church, that position you are given in that institution, it is nothing. It doesn't matter when you lose a son or a daughter. That is when you realize it is worthless. It is nothing. It is, it, is, it is nothing to be a deacon. It is nothing to be a CEO. It is nothing to be a leader when you lose a daughter, when you lose a son. Welcome them. It is not you that you are getting out of your husband's house. It is them. So don't worry about society. Don't worry about position and church. So parents, let's receive our sons, let's receive our daughters, please. When they come and tell you, he, he beated me, he, he, he took a knife, you know, she, she was boiling water for me. She told me she will burn me in that house. She told me she will kill me. She even bought, you know, a, a, a knife she bought. Please listen to them. Listen to your children. So I finish by saying it is not worth to be in an abusive marriage for you to maintain a good status, good name, fame, beautiful marriage, couple goals. 
it is nothing. It is not worth it. Celebrities, influencers, people of great names, public figures, I'm telling you, it is not worth it when you are dead. You are not helping us when you are dead. You are not. PR is one of the things that have killed men and women of God. And we say, we cover up, we say, they died out of cancer. They died out of high blood pressure. It is, uh, uh, it is uh, diabetes. It is this and that killed this man or this woman of God. When we know very well, she died out of depression, out of stress and ulcers because she was in, abu in an abusive marriage. But she covered it up because she don't want to be seen as a failure by society. She don't want to be seen like not a leader or a bad role model. You better become single and you sell or you give people what God have put in you than being married and you die before you fulfill your dreams and you fulfill your destiny. We need you alive. Abuse is a big no. It's a big, whichever abuse it is, it is a big no. And if it turns to be physical, run. Mm -hmm. Prophetess Monica, you're telling people to leave marriages. Not really. Not, if that is not what I'm saying. I'm not advocating divorce and all that and all that because I know some people will cut and paste and put some things that they want, especially bloggers. I'm here to tell a person it is not worth to be in an abusing marriage, abusive marriage. Peace of mind is very important. And you, you are very important. Remember, there are people that love you, people that count on you, people that look up on you. When you die, when you die, you are not helping them. It was a random thought and uh, a random talk. Let me know your views through comments. If this video is a blessing to you, share it. And God bless you. If you're new here, you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Subscribe and I will appreciate that. I will appreciate. Subscribe. Press a notification or bell so that you'll be notified anytime I drop something. God bless you. I am truly yours. Faithful. PM, Prophetess Monica. I love you guys. I love you and I love you and I love you. Till we meet again, keep it Prophetess Monica official channel.